All right, guys, welcome back. We got another task going on today. We're getting a garden going, and we just got some compost dropped off. I was able to put the moldboard plow on after I extended it. It worked great. The only thing, only hiccup I had, oh, that's what it was that I forgot too. Um, one of the bushings, really, what it was is it was a, it was an E clip that. Um, or C clip, whatever you want to call it. It's got the three tabs on it, but it's in the shape of a C. One of those came off on the inside of the swing arm, the lift swing arm for the plow on the back and for the tiller, it's the same same piece. Well, one side came off and as I was pulling through some roots over here, it, uh, it must have broke. Well, it definitely broke the lip on one of the bushings and then it ended up, um, it popped out because it pushed through on the one side because it didn't have the c-clip limiting it and so that popped out so i disconnected it went up took it back up to the garage and um took the seat off and stuff and then repositioned everything uh put a new c-clip in there and then uh ended up finishing it out so i plowed it yesterday and this is what we got uh we ended up getting just a yard of compost so i got that from bushel mart down at the end of the street um little expensive it was like 68 bucks including delivery or 72 bucks including delivery i'll probably end up getting two yards next time but um <clears throat> this will help we got a bag of lime as well so i'm gonna go ahead and amend the soil i'm gonna push all that stuff in and then i'm gonna bring the tiller out so uh, what i'm doing right now is i got my plow my dozer blade out here and this is one that I restored a few years ago. Um, it was just completely rusted. And it's definitely in a lot better shape now. There are a few dings on it just from using it. I mean, you can't prevent that stuff. Uh, I am hoping that I'll be able to at least, because the blade itself is in good shape, it's just the frame. I would like to pull the frame apart or off of it. And then once I get a bigger powder coating oven built and end up powder coating the whole thing, that'd be awesome. So, right now what I'm getting ready to pull off the pieces under here. I don't know if you'll even be able to see any of this. Yeah, it's kind of dark. I don't know if the light will help. Not much. Alright, so, here I just show you what I'm doing here. I have a couple things with me including a towel i don't know about you guys but ever since i was young and can remember if i had any sweat or anything on my body when i laid down on grass in the summer i would uh <laughs> neighbor kids here i would get super itchy so this is what i gotta do there it is so you just pull that out from this piece here because it goes in you have two two pieces here you got that uh, are on a cam is what it's called and you got the lower arm which does the rear lift and then the upper arm which does the deck lift so you got to pull it out of the upper arm obviously this is why it didn't want to come out very well easily there we go it's a little better so we'll stick that back in there so we don't lose it and then we want to pop out okay let me see here I might be able to give you guys a better view So there's a little cotter pin or a C clip right there. Just want to pop that out. That guy right there. So once you pop that out, then you can. There we go. Okay. So you pop it out from the one side because it's, I'm 
should say. It's kind of hard to see, but there's pretty much just dead ends right into that hole. See the bright one on the right? Well, the dark one on the left is where the, the pivot pin goes. So it just sits in there. And then once you get it to the right spot, you can just pop the whole thing out like that. And then it's got a little bushing. Put the bushing back in there like that. And then the whole thing comes off. Set that aside. Hopefully that's wide enough to where you guys can see. So you just stick this and there. You can put it in these other ones, but this one will give you the most lift. And then this is a little bit of a tricky part. All right. So let's see if we can. Oh, first time. Look at that, folks. Yeah, that should be all right. We'll go ahead and push it all the way up. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that is where we're at. All right, so what we got here is the pivot for the dozer blade. It's got four carriage bolts and lock nuts. Your trusty ratcheting wrench. Tighten it up, make sure it's lined up evenly. And the best way to do it is to go off the distance from the hub to the bolt. So as long as those are, you know, pretty lined up. There is a trick though when you're putting on the detailer, I gotta keep in mind. So. this is lined up right you should be able to lift this right into place Just gonna do this little link right here. I got robo fingers. Nah, no, just kidding, it wasn't that hard. Goes out easier the other one. folks okay so 
This guy right here. Take these off. Too bad. It's a pretty good spout. It was a quick spour, quick pour spout. It's good while it lasted. I think it was like 12 bucks or something at the auto parts store. That's just about full there. Get that all cleaned up. You don't want any residue left over. I'm sure there's a little bit down below, but go ahead and put that back on. All right, the last part of the equation, the hat. <laughs> it's not real sunny back there, but you know what? It keeps the sweat out of my eyes. And it does a good job doing it, baby. You gotta love it. Last thing you want is Messed up vision to where you something bad happens. Love this thing, man. Fires right up.
that said I'm going to bring the tiller in. All right, so it's pretty simple. Just pull up, drop the, uh, the dozer blade down, and then there's the two levers in the back that I locked. You just drop and drop after you've taken the, the solid uh, lift, and, lift bar out pop and pop and the thing just falls right down you back off with the wheel horse there's a couple of pieces that you need that are a little different here this is the idler pulley setup that you need for the rototiller and obviously that gets dropped in just like um, just like the deck gets locked in it's the attachmatic here I'm trying to find the best way to And just lock it in. And like I said, it just gets locked in by the good old attachmatic. All right, let's go take a look at the tiller here. That's where she gets stored on a pallet under a tarp. Oh, this thing is a monster. Let's pull the sucker out. Careful, she'll bite you. Hoop. Sucker is heavy. Oh, just took a chunk of skin out of it. Right there. <laughs> All right, so we pull this big old Bertha over. Like I said, she gets attached to this pivot point as well. What you want to do is you want to line it up. To where she pivots. Just right. Now this one is a little trickier because you gotta get this underneath there before you lift it up or as you're lifting it up. Because otherwise you won't be able to lock it in with that little bar in the way. something to it so this is what's stopping us right there so I gotta undo these 916s real quick move it over and then it should fit right up in there
Okay. Last thing to do here. pretty easy all right here she is she's a long one something like a 103 inch belt I think this is a Kevlar I got this from the belt guys that's pretty much the only place I get my stuff all right so see this here so I mean obviously it's pretty easy back here this one is send her on forward and wrap it around the big one under that idler pulley just like that you can see it goes right under it in the front right under there it just goes forward can't just wrap it around here it's gotta gotta take your pins out here take your clutch Harness or your clutch ring, and that pops down. And then you want this to go over the ring on the top because it's got to come out just like that. And then you just put this back, put your big pin back in. Put your clutch lever back in, as well as your hairpin. Get your hitch pin back in. I always give that a good squeeze. That way I make sure that when I stretch it out, I'm pushing it back into place. Now this can be a tight squeeze, folks. That's it. So that is your setup. And I, I put it on the bigger one. It lines up perfect for one. And the bigger one's gonna give you better speed. So that's it. All right, let's go ahead and give it a test here. So that's it. All right, she works, so we're gonna go put her to work. 
go set you guys up and then you can see some more tailing. Alright, the only thing I had to add was the counterweight in the front just to make sure it's got good balance. This is a new section here. It's about six foot or so that we just went in because of the path of the sun. I don't get a whole lot over there, so I think I'm just gonna end up letting that grow out or whatever. And I think this is gonna be the prime spot for us. Did the first couple years this way. Now we're gonna do, um, it's pretty much, uh, I'd say it's just a tiny bit smaller maybe a few feet narrower and then a few feet shorter in length. But I think it'll turn out. So, all right guys, that's it. This thing runs great. It does an awesome job. I usually let it cool down a couple minutes at idle. Uh, just to bring it back down to temperature before I shut it off. This is about due for an oil change, so. But yeah. This was a seat that I picked up at Harbor Freight, or not Harbor Freight, I'm sorry about that. Tractor Supply. And that thing turned out pretty good. It's a really comfortable seat. Um, I use Aerospace 3, 302, I think, is what it's called. It's uh, for vinyl and plastics and rubber and all kinds of different surfaces, but it provides like superior UV protection, so been doing pretty good so thanks a lot for uh, following along with me here and getting the garden started I'll give you guys updates on how it progresses and uh, 
yeah, we'll give you guys some more videos and how everything's turning out. So this is the kind of stuff I want to be doing now. I'm going to be outdoors a lot more this year. And, uh, well, going to be doing a lot more videos about outdoor stuff this year. So, But like I said, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that alert bell so you're updated on, uh, so you're sent notifications on future videos and series that I got going on. And I just really appreciate you guys coming back and supporting the channel. And, uh, you know, I always love comments and I like going back and forth with people. If there's anything that I don't know that you guys think that I can improve on, please let me know. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Come on back.